I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Easter literally refers to the time of year in the spring when the days become longer than the nights. But for the person who knows Jesus Christ, Easter means a lot more than that. It means that even though Jesus died, salvation didn't. Even though Jesus was buried, hope wasn't. Because Jesus is alive. Easter means there is forgiveness for my failures grace for my guilt and mercy for my misery. Easter means that the pain and the silence of living in a Saturday world isn't purposeless and it isn't permanent. Easter means that I can't out sin the grace of God and I can't outrun the reach of God. It means that Jesus is King, light overcomes darkness, and justice will win and brokenness will be broken. Easter means that the scars on the hands of Jesus are telling a story of victory, not defeat. And the same is true for me. It means that I am not alone, not ashamed, not forgotten and not forsaken. It means that the rain and the storms and the wind and the waves of this world will not have the last word because my future is a resurrected body with the resurrected Jesus on a resurrected earth. Easter means that I can join with a choir of saints and angels singing, Oh death, where is your victory? Oh grave, where is your sting? Oh hell, where is your song? Easter means that as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed my transgressions from me. And as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for me. Easter means that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because you are with me. Welcome to KWCF Online. We're so glad that you tuned in. We're glad that you came to celebrate Easter with us together. We hope that in this time of uncertainty in our world, you're able to find hope and encouragement through what we have to offer this morning. Happy Easter to you and your family Sit back or stand up and let's just go into worship together and celebrate our Christ the Savior, our risen King. See you soon.
wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Build your 
your blood I spill my heart as an offering to Guilt 
in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Just before we go to prayer this uh, Sunday morning, this Easter Sunday morning, I want to read a a portion of scripture from Isaiah 53 and 5. And it says, He was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Today, Jesus is the healer for the world, spirit, soul, and body. Let's go to prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we celebrate the name of Jesus. We celebrate the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. We thank you, Lord, that because of your blood, we're more than conquerors through Christ. And that you have made this great uh, provision in our life to uh, bring us back into fellowship with you today, Lord. And we just pray for everyone that needs physical, spiritual and emotional healing today, Lord. We pray that their hearts, their lives, their bodies would be changed. Lord, today we uh, speak the peace of God over people watching in the name of Jesus, Lord, for we know that you're the great one and that your name is lifted up above all today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church family. Maurice Rushton here. So Easter is a very symbolic, special, important time of year. This is when we reflect, we commemorate, we celebrate, we certainly appreciate the sacrifice that was made on the cross by Jesus Christ. You know, this is a time where we also acknowledge that Jesus' death and resurrection was the only way. It was the only way that we could be drawn closer to God. We were separated by sin, And so God, in his infinite love for the world, sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that we could be drawn closer to him. And I'm emphasizing the word closer because all I keep hearing these days is distancing, distant. And so I just want to remind everyone, and I want to speak a little bit about it and emphasize the fact that we should be drawing closer to God in good times and in bad times because he made a way for us to do that. I want to give you three verses that uh, came to me in my research when I was thinking about what to say and what to sing. Uh, In James 4, verse 8, it says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. In Psalm 145, 18, it says, The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. And then finally, in Psalm 73, verse 28, it says, But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. The nearness of God is my good. And so as I reflected on being distant socially, I was also reflecting on being closer to God. And I started thinking about the price that was paid for me to be able to have the opportunity and the privilege of being closer to God, for all of us to have the opportunity and the privilege of being closer to God. There was a price that was paid for that. And so the song that I wanted to sing for you today is called, You Made A Way. And I actually found this song a long time ago, but I sent it out to the worship team uh, because I wanted us to sing it for Easter. I said, guys, you gotta practice your parts, make sure that you learn the song. Little did I know that I would be singing and playing this song by myself in front of all of you. So we're going to see how that goes today. Um, But the song You Made Away is very important, uh, and it's important for two reasons. The first reason is because we're acknowledging that, yes, 
God did make a way through Jesus Christ. Uh, and then the second reason is because the song offers hope, uh, not only the hope in the fact that God had made a way through Jesus Christ and through his death and his resurrection, but the song offers hope that God could continue to make a way. It's something that he could continue to do. We don't know how he's going to do it. We don't know how it's all going to work out, but we have faith and we trust that he's going to make a way. So I hope that you're encouraged by the song. I hope that it touches your heart and I hope that you enjoy it. You made a way Don't know how but you did it You made a way Standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know that Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win You wrap us in your arms and you step in Oh yes you do and everything we need to supply You've got this in control And now we know that you made a way Yes, Jesus, you made a way And when our backs were, when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over Jesus, you made a way Oh Jesus, yes you did You made a way Now we're standing, now we're standing here Only because you made a way Now we're standing here only because you made a way Oh, yeah Oh, And now we're here Looking back on where we've come from Because of you and nothing we've done To deserve the love and mercy you've shown Your grace was strong enough to pick us up Yes, you made a way Yes, Jesus, you made a way and when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over Jesus you made a way sing it one more time Jesus you made a way and now we're standing now we're standing here only because you made a way Now we're standing here Only because you made a way Yeah, oh You made a way You made a way I love this part You move mountains You cause walls to with your power You perform miracles There is nothing That's impossible 
Now we're standing here Only because you made it Now we're standing here Only because you made a way Now we're standing here Only because you made a way Oh, oh, yes, you did, Lord, you See, you move mountains And you cause walls to fall With your power You perform miracles There is nothing, nothing that's impossible Now we're standing here Only because you made that way Now we're standing here Only because you made a way Now it's your turn Sing you made a way You made a way It's real simple, you made it, you made a way, oh yes you did, come on sing it out, you made a way, you made a way, don't know how but you did it, you made a way, don't know how but you did it, I don't know how you're gonna do it But you'll make a way, oh yes you will Don't know how you're gonna do it But you'll make a way Hey online family, I'm David the Connect Pastor here at KWCF and whether you're here for the first time or you've tuned in before, we want to just encourage you to share this video with someone today. If you're completely new, you've never tuned in before, there's a form below that I want to encourage you to fill out. And I'm personally going to reach out to you and send all the information about our church and our stuff that we have going on. We want to encourage you as well in this dark time that our world is going through. To get access to Right Now Media, we have that available for you and your family and your children. Just go to our website, you can go under kwcf.org slash kids or Right Now Media and we'll give you free access. I was just talking to a lady recently and she told me how great of an encouragement that has been to her in this hard season for her and her kids. Um, we want to also encourage you to join our live groups that we have going on online. You can go kwcf.org slash groups. We also want to encourage you for the children uh, after this service. Children, just go and we have a special Easter program in just for you on our website. If you have an encouragement that you'd like to share with us, we want to encourage you to send us an email, send us a video, send us um, a, a testimonial about what God has been doing in your life during this hard season. We just want to be a light and beacon of hope in our world today and send as much as we can out there to people to be encouraged. Also, we want to thank you for your donations and your giving. We're just grateful that we as a church can be a help in our community, that we can produce programming like this, that we can uh, put work uh, behind the scenes to make all this possible for you. We're just grateful for you, for your giving. So uh, if you haven't given and you're wondering how to do that, you can go to our website, kwcf.org slash give, and all the information is there. You can text this number below, or you can just e-transfer us at offerings at kwcf.org. You can also just set up direct deposit with your bank. Whatever is the easiest way for you, you can go and do that. If you need any information, if you need any help uh, in regards to anything, just text this number right now below. Uh, this number is our emergency number. You can text with whatever uh, question you may have or need. Or if you just have a prayer request, send it to us right now. We also have a button below for prayer requests. We wanna pray for you, we wanna pray for your family. And we really hope that we're gonna get through all this together. And we're gonna come out on the other end, stronger and better because of all this. 
And now, just want to encourage you to just enjoy this special Easter presentation message from our own lead pastor, Ken Miles. Well, happy Easter, everyone. Happy Resurrection Day. I tell you, the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes all the difference in the world. Well, today I want to share a message with you. And the title of my message is called Five Days of Easter. Now, this message was inspired by a dream that I had a couple of nights ago. Now, in this dream, I was preaching. And I was doing very well. I was, I was really getting with it. The people were responding. And uh, now, let's see. If you're going to have a dream about preaching, it might as well be a good dream. A dream where people are responding and you feel good about it. And I did. I felt, I felt an anointing in this dream that I was preaching. And the topic of the dream was I was likening the death of Jesus on Good Friday to being like the coronavirus that came and is bringing death to so many people. And in my dream... It was a very good message. Now, the only problem was, when I woke up, I remembered what I preached about, but I couldn't remember any points, and I didn't understand why I thought this was so good. But I did feel prompted to go to the Scripture and to see if there was a connection in this way. And I believe that there is, and I think the truths I want to share with you this morning is very, very uh, meaningful. So let's look at it. What I want to do is share how the five days of Easter, that first Easter that happened so long ago in the life of Jesus, his death and his resurrection, how it correlates and is an analogy to what we're going through right now in this coronavirus. And so let's look and see uh, what comes from this? Now, the first day I want to talk about is the Thursday. The Thursday before Good Friday. Now, in the ecclesiastical uh, calendar, it's called Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday. And on this Thursday, uh, the church celebrates the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples and the fact that he washed their feet. It sort of represents, as I want to share with you, the end of his earthly ministry up to that point. He was on the earth, and Jesus was having a tremendous ministry. For three and a half years, he had moved around. He was doing great teaching, miracles, healings were happening, the multitudes were fed, uh, the disciples were with him, and they watched him. And it was a great ministry. In fact, in Matthew 7 and 28, it says this. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. And then Matthew 15 and verse 31. So the multitudes marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. So this time of Jesus' ministry, and Thursday I'm using to represent all of those days leading up to Good Friday, it was a time where, for the most part, the ministry was conducted by Jesus, and the disciples watched. Now let's switch to modern day, and let's look at the Thursday before the coronavirus struck. And I'm using this day as Thursday to represent what was our ministry like leading up to this time before COVID-19 struck. And we saw that the ministry was going full force uh, in basically in this church building. Uh, every night something was happening. Small groups were meeting. During the week, uh, the children playground was open. There was lots of activity going on. And the focus was mostly for our members. 
It was time of worship, teaching, prayer times for when we had needs, and programs to minister to children uh, that we have. And so I would sort of summarize that time of ministry. And if I'm fair to say it, I would say for the most part, the ministry of the church was conducted by the leaders while the members attended and watched. So just like in the first Easter, the most of the ministry of Jesus, it was his ministry, the disciples watched and participated. And similarly, for our ministry, it was done in this building, it was done for our benefit, and uh, the leaders led, the pastors preached, and the people watched. But then Friday came. Let's move to the second day of Easter. Good Friday. That first Good Friday was horrendous. We call it good today. But it was anything but good in the life of Jesus so long ago. It caused a major disruption in the lives of these disciples. When Jesus was arrested, he was taken and tried. And they had never seen Jesus in this way. It was like Jesus was always in control. But now he's being rested, and he's being beaten, and he's taken before the, the leaders of the Sanhedrin. And as a result, Jesus was taken from the disciples. Their whole world was set upside down. He was no longer ministering personally. He was taken away. They saw him actually crucified and then laid in a tomb. And I imagine... It was such a, a shaking that they had to have asked themselves, what just happened? Everything was going so well. What's happened here? In fact, the verse that goes with this is Mark 14 and verse 27. Then Jesus said to them, this was just before, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Now we move to this disruption that's happened on in our lifetime here. And we're just trying to use the analogy here. That Good Friday that happened to us. It didn't seem so good. Suddenly out of nowhere this coronavirus. We're reading about it and watching it. And we're seeing it spreading and it's spreading around the world. And until now, everyone is so fearful of standing too close to someone or to touch something that someone else has touched. And we've been disrupted here as a church. We're not meeting in this building. It's like, everything, it's like the church has been taken from us. Just like the early first Easter... Jesus was taken from the disciples. Everything they thought was normal and was happening is now disrupted. And it seems like the same has happened for us. That this coronavirus has killed many of the ministries that we have. Now, we're carrying them on and we're ministering to you online here. But, but still, you can understand the disruption. And, many, and, and just as the early church uh, disciples were scattered and were... In homes, so we are sort of scattered and we're in homes. And it's left us puzzled in the same way that early church was. What just happened? And what's this all about? So we see Thursday, we see Friday. Now this leads us to Saturday. Saturday is this day between Good Friday and Easter. It's a day of waiting. Time is just being put in. And the disciples, they're hiding. It says in John 20 and verse 19, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, they were hiding. 
Peter has denied the Lord. He has seen Jesus, and when they try to say he's one of his disciples, he goes, oh, no, no, I'm not. And so they're hiding. It's a time of uncertainty. They don't know what the future is going to hold. It's like their whole world has been put on pause. It looked like nothing was happening. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what the disciples said or did during that day, that Saturday, but you can just imagine the uncertainty and the fearfulness that they had about that time. Now, today, we are, or let me, let me just go for back just a moment. It looked like nothing was happened to the, happening to the, the, by the disciples as they looked on. But really, tremendous things were happening. Jesus was at work during that Saturday. Now, it's amazing, but as the scripture tells us in uh, 1 Peter 3.19, he went in the spiritual realm and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. Jesus actually descended into Hades and he made a proclamation, a proclamation of victory, a proclamation that their sins have now been dealt with. And it said he led captivity captive. And the faithful dead was raised and taken to heaven during this time. This, this process on this Saturday when the disciples thought nothing was happening, actually great things were happening. Jesus was liberati liberating the uh, captives in prison. And also it says that he took the keys of death and of hell. And he was victorious over these. The way Colossians 2.15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. So this Saturday, this day when it seemed like nothing was happening to the disciples, actually Jesus was at work and he was accomplishing a great victory. Now let's go to today. We are going through this time. It's like this time we're living right now, even though this is Easter Sunday, but in the light of this analogy, we're still in this time of Saturday. Saturday. We're in this time of waiting. We're still in our homes. We're wondering what's happening. We are doing our best to cope, but there's an uncertainty about it all. And we wonder, when will things get back to normal? And we're not sure it ever will get back to normal. But I want you to know something. God is at work during this time. Oh, you need to see this. Even though we don't know, why is this happening? Why are we no longer can meet in, in our services? Why are we in our homes? Why is this virus spreading? And we wonder, what, how, what is God doing during this time? But I will assure you, God is at work. Just as sure as he was in the first century, he is at work during this time. We may not see or understand what he's, what's happening, but I believe in the depths of my being, God is working something behind the scenes. He's proclaiming something. He's shaping something. He's liberating some people. He's liberating, I believe, his church, and he wants us to come out of this time victorious. He's doing something even though we don't see it. Now that brings us to that first Easter morning. Finally, the Sabbath is over. That's why Jesus had to be quickly uh, taken down from the cross and put in the tomb. The women did not have time to prepare his body properly. The Sabbath is, had come. They were disrupted. And now, though, it's the first day of the week. It's Sunday. And they can get back to normal. So they pick up right where they left off. They pick up their stuff. They're going to the tomb. They're going to finish the funeral preparations on the body of Jesus. But something happened. It was Easter. It was Resurrection Sunday. And when they got to the tomb, the tomb was empty. 
And they were told that he was risen. He's not here. But he's gone on before you. And go and tell the disciples that he is risen. Something had happened. There was a, a resurrection. There was a renewal of life in the body of Jesus. Now Mary who had gone to the tomb. She seemed to tarry in the garden. And she saw someone and she thought it was the gardener. But then when she got close to it. She saw that it was Jesus. But it was Jesus with a different kind of body. It was no longer a bruised body that had been beaten and so uh, and tortured on the cross. He was a resurrected Christ. He had a glorified body. I don't know whether it glowed, but there was something about this man, the risen Jesus. He had gone through resurrection. And the time went on. And the disciples came to see him. He, he reveals himself to the two disciples walking on the road, road to Emmaus. And he reveals who he is. And he tells them about what was happening. And we find in John 20, in verse 19 to 23, says he's revealing himself to his disciples. It said, Jesus came, stood in the midst, and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And then he went on to say, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, these disciples who had watched Jesus in ministry, Jesus tells them, you know, I'm going to be going away and I'm going to ascend into heaven. But I'm giving you a commission. There's something for you to do. You are to carry on this ministry. And it says in Mark 16, 15 to 16, go into all the world, Jesus told them. And preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. He gave the disciples the message of life and of death. Of heaven and hell. And he said whoever you preach this message to. If they believe they'll be saved. But if they don't believe they're going to be lost. And so in that early church you see. Now that the. That Jesus is alive, and but he's going away. And now these disciples that had watched in the past are now given the responsibility to carry this message forward to the entire world. Now, let's go back to our analogy today. There is going to be an Easter as, in regard to this uh, COVID-19. There will be a time when we come out the other side. There'll be a time when this is over. And we can return to our lives. And I believe we're going to come out stronger than ever before. And I believe, just as in that early church, Easter was a transitioning of ministry from Jesus to the disciples. Is it possible? That when we come out of this time, when the Easter comes and shines on this COVID-19 pandemic, and this is put behind us, and we can return and pick up our duties, is it possible that the body of Christ will be different? Just like Jesus had a different body after the resurrection. Is it possible that the church might take on a different look? That we would be glorified, more glorified than we ever have been in the past. And that we will be able to function. And that the ministry, just as in Jesus' time, transferred from Jesus to the disciples. Now listen to me. Is it possible that we're going through this whole time? Because, because God desires that the ministry of his church will transfer from leaders to members. 
Wow. Think about this. What God might have in store through this time. He's shaken everything. And I believe there's a resurrection coming to the church that's going to come forth more powerful than it's ever been before. Now that leads us to the last day that we're going to talk about in this five days of Easter. And that is Easter Monday. Easter Monday. The time after the resurrection. And so I'm not just referring to this as one day, but I'm basically referring this to the following Mondays. So what happened in that first century? In the following Mondays after Jesus rose from the dead. Well, we find that just 50 days later, there was the birth of the church. That the church was born on the day of Pentecost. That Jesus waited for 40 days and ministered to them, but then ascended into heaven. And then 10 days they waited in the upper room. And it says in Acts 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together, gathered in one place, and they heard a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole place where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And they spilled out of that upper room into the streets and they began to proclaim to everyone what had happened and that Jesus had died but he had risen and they spoke the word with power being anointed by the Holy Spirit. And as a result, the church became the body of Christ. And Jesus' body, physical body, ascended into heaven. But now the church became the body of Christ. And it began to do all the things that Jesus was doing. It spoke the words. It healed. It brought comfort. All of the things that Jesus did. There was a shift, as we said earlier. A shift from Jesus' ministry to the ministry of the church. And as a result, the church experienced exponential growth. Here's the description of the church given in Acts chapter 2. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them. This is Peter on the day of Pentecost. He said, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. In the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together. And they had all things in common. No longer were they selfish. No longer were they just thinking about themselves. Now they began to distribute to the needs of others. And it says in verse 45. And sold their possessions and goods. And divided them among all as anyone had need. Then it goes on. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And notice. And breaking bread from house to house. Now there's a difference. Rather than just going to the temple. Now their ministry happened from house to house. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church from Sunday to Sunday. No, it says, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This ministry was not limited to just what happened on Sunday in the building. In fact, they didn't have buildings. They met from house to house. And wherever they were, the church was there. And the church was ministering. And people heard the gospel. And they responded to the gospel. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So that's what happened in the Mondays following that first Easter. Now, now, can we just imagine for a moment? If God is doing a work through this time. And there's going to be an Easter that comes. That's going to bring life and health back to the world. Is it possible that we're going to come out the other side? What will the church be like? Will the church return to normal? I hope not. 
I hope we have more power. I hope we have more energy. I hope we're not reliant on the building. I hope we're not reliant on pastors and leaders. I'm praying that the church will be functioning 24-7. This is, I think, what the Lord is doing. He wants to bring a shift. To shift the church from being for us to being for the world. So much of our activities are for us. And some of that is good and needs to continue and will continue. But the church is, has a mission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. To make a difference for Christ. And I believe God wants a transition and a shift to happen. That again the church is energized. Again the church is filled with the Holy Spirit. And I get that we are going house to house, workplace to workplace, from community center to community center. Wherever we go, the church is going and the church is active. So those are the five days of Easter. Now let me just ask the question, where are we right now on this timeline? Uh, where are we? Well, I would say to you, we're in the Saturday portion of this timeline. We're still hindered from moving. Uh, the virus is still spreading. We are still waiting. It's still a time of uncertainty. We're in this time, I believe, of a Saturday. We're in this time of a, of a pause. Now listen, this is just astounding to me. The whole world has been put on pause. I don't think there's ever been a time in the history of the world where one thing has gripped the attention of the whole world and has affected the whole world in the same way. I don't think there's ever been a time other than the flood. Now, you've got to really go back to the flood. That affected the whole world. But can you think of a time when something happened that affected the whole world? I mean, not even the great First and Second World Wars. That affected much of the world, but it didn't affect the whole world. There were some nations that didn't touch at all. But this has touched 182 nations. I mean, this is spread. I mean, this is something that is amazing. I saw a headline and it said humanity on lockdown. Humanity. All of humanity is on lockdown. There's restrictions around the world. I tell you, nothing has ever happened like this before in the world that we know of. That I can ever imagine. So I have to believe God is at work through this time. He's doing something through this time. People are being told to stay in their homes. Don't go out unless it's absolutely necessary. And, and listen, the authorities of the world are telling all the peoples of the world to withdraw from the world. Now, have you ever had that happen before? It reminds me of this verse that Jesus uh, is, is written in the scripture, 1 John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Now, we've always been admonished by this verse. Don't love the world. Don't love the things that are in the world. Don't get, don't get taken up in the world. If you love those things, you're going to, the love of the, of the God is going to diminish. And you can't love both. And so we try to follow this. Now, folks, it's like the Lord has enforced this verse. He's had all the rulers of the world say, withdraw from the world. All the activities of the world, everything that you've ever done, withdraw from it. And suddenly, we have this rare opportunity. We're at home. Our lives that were so full with work and activities that we hardly had time to think and that one day just followed the other, and we really didn't give much planning or forethought to anything. It was like we were on an assembly line and we're just moving forward. And, and we really don't know where we're going. And a lot of people have lived their lives that way. Very busy lives, but no purpose. No real direction. Just sort of moving with the flow. And suddenly, 
All of that has changed. God's put the whole world on pause. It's like he's, he has our attention. And we have time to notice things that we never noticed before. Now that reminds me of the post that I saw on online by a man. And his post was, on the second day that sports was canceled, I noticed this lady in the house who says that she's my wife. She seems nice. Now, of course, that's just something that makes us all smile. But really, it represents what's happened. Suddenly, all the things that were taking our time, that we were ignoring one another and not functioning together, now suddenly, it's all stopped. And we have opportunity like never before. Will we take advantage of this time? How do we take advantage of this time? Well, I think there's three aspects that I would say to you. And it's this. We're, we're, we've been moving along, and then the first is just God's put us on pause. We just need to pause. It's been an enforced pause. But what do we do during the pause? I would suggest to you we need to pivot Turn. In the pause, pivot. And then, proceed. But proceed in a different direction than what you were going before. Proceed on purpose. Now, God is doing something through this time. He's gotten all of our attention. And he wants the world to pivot. To pivot to him. Pivot away from the love of things that we've been doing. And pivot towards the Lord. We need to ask ourselves. What's really important? You need to evaluate your life. What's your life been all about? What has your priorities been? What should your priorities be? Before, we were just going with the rush. But now, you really need to take time and think. And use this time to see God. To spend time in his word. Spend time in prayer. Spend time talking to other people about spiritual things. Things that are important. Use this pause to find out what is the purpose for your life. What does God have for you? Use this time to reconnect with your spouse and family. Observe them. Understand who they are. What are their needs? How can you minister to them? And use this time to consider others and the friendships that you have and the relationships and how could they be improved. During this pause, you need to pivot. Let the Lord show you the direction he wants you to take coming out of this. And I really believe if we'll do this, God will speak to you. If you've never heard his voice, you will hear his voice now. He's put us on pause. He's asked us to seek him. So seek him. Open your ear. He will speak to you if you have a sincere heart. And he'll show you how he wants you to change. And not only will he teach us this, but he will empower us by his Holy Spirit to do it. Just like that early church was empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill their mission, God will empower us to fulfill our mission. So don't waste this pause. How could you waste it? By obsessing on the news. Just watching every newscast. And letting your heart fill more and more with fear. I mean don't obsess on the news. Keep up to date. Keep up to what's happening. But don't just fill your mind constantly with negativity. Because the Bible tells us to think on good things. And so during this time of pause, 
don't waste it by just thinking on negative things. And secondly, don't waste it binging on TV and watching Netflix. I mean, we need to, we need to have a balance here and say, this is not something I should just fill with idleness. But let me, Lord, seek you during this time. God wants us to reset. He wants to reset the earth. He wants to reset the church. He wants to reset your family. He wants to reset you individually. So here are some of the pivots that I think he would want us to come out of this. How would the church come out of this time? I think he wants us to pivot from a focus on things and activities and pivot to a focus on God and his mission. What does God want to do in this world? I'm not here to get God to serve me. I'm here to serve God. What, what does he want? So pivot to that. Pivot from a personal focus. And pivot to a focus on your families and your friends and others. Pivot from aimless direction to fulfilling the mission God has for you. You have a purpose. God has designed you. He wants you to know what that purpose is. Know what your giftings are. And begin to move in the direction of the, your mission for life. And finally, as far as the church goes, he wants us to pivot from attending church to being the church. Pivot from thinking everything happens in the church building to realizing, you know what? Really, I'm the church, and this is a 24-7 endeavor, not certain meetings at the church. So proceed. Proceed and take personal responsibility for, shedding, or for sharing the gospel. Do good to people. Help people. Love people. Live to increase the kingdom of God, to bring benefit to the kingdom of God. Now, I've shared before that one of the things that's gripped my heart, that every time I put my head on my pillow, this question comes to my mind, how did I benefit the kingdom of God today? And that should be a question that's in every one of our hearts and minds. How did my life benefit the kingdom of God today? I'm his body. I'm on the earth. What did he want me to do? What did he want me to say? Where did he want me to go? And I tell you, we're going to come out of this, this whole pandemic glorified. We're going to come up with new purpose. We're going to come out filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to see God do a mighty work. The church is going to grow exponentially. And so that's my message for you today. We're going through these five days of Easter. Right now, we're on the Saturday. We're still in the pause. But we have something to do. Be sure that in this pause, you pivot. And we come out of it proceeding to fulfill the will of God. Let me pray for all of us today. Lord, I believe this is your word for us today. I believe you gave me that dream. Just that you would bring my attention to think of this. And that I could address every person that's watching today. That they would realize you have put their life on pause. And you want to speak to them. And you want to change them. And I ask, Lord, that they would seek you with their whole heart. And that you would speak to them in different ways, in different means. You'll speak to each person individually. And empower them by the Holy Spirit. And may we come out of this time better personally, better as a family, better as a church, and that we would be doing your work according to the way you want us to. I pray that this would be the resurrection, this resurrection Sunday. This would be a resurrection in our heart to the purposes of God. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, the Lord bless you, and we are going to move forward together powerfully. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're so glad you came to celebrate Easter with us. 
We just want to encourage you to share this video right now. Send us a message below. If you have a prayer request, just send us a message right now. We want to be able to pray for you. We have a team that's dedicated, uh, that just prays for people and their needs. And we want to include you in that if you have a prayer request. If you'd like to donate, just go to this link below. Click there, kwcf.org slash give. If you have any questions, if you have uh, anything you'd like to share with us, a testimony, encouragement, send it to us. We're just glad that we can be a blessing to you and your family in this hard season. We hope to see you next week. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Easter, a wonderful week. And we'll see you next time online. Bye for now.